perhaps one of the most well-known Russian army marches, and my personal favorite, Farewell of Slavyanka, or Prashenya Slavyanki, is, in my opinion, a beautiful musical composition. I remember listening to it when I was around five or six years old, and that's when I really began to enjoy it. And today, I felt it important to delve into its history as one of the most prominent military marches in the world. <laughs> Back in the day, I often didn't listen to much Soviet military music like this out loud due to it invoking an emotional response from my parents who, when living in the USSR, heard this march so many times and linked it to the years of death, suffering, and eventual victory over the German Reich in the Second World War. The song was written with such a tone to it that it would instantly create in your head a memory or a feeling which made you look back and realize the war that had taken place long ago and to remember the heroes that fought and died in it, to rid the world of an unimaginable evil. The march was originally composed by a military conductor named Vasily Agapkin in the year 1912, and was first played or premiered in the city of Tambov. This was the song that was played in World War I, when soldiers marched off to fight in the Great War, and said goodbye to their loved ones. On November 7th of 1941, this was also the song under which Soviet soldiers during the Second World War marched directly to fight in the Battle of Moscow. And in the Russian Civil War, it was the unofficial anthem of the White Army. And it is believed that due to its prior use, the song was banned up until 1940, as it evidently contained words that the Soviet government did not want its people to hear at the time. To date, there exist many versions of Farewell of Slavyanka. None of the versions have changes in melody, but rather in their tempo and their lyrics. In accordance with the times, the original lyrics of the song went along the lines of Arise, O Russian land, defend your faith, and something like We love you no matter what, you are holy land, as seen in this excerpt. <laughs> two versions of the song that I found which were made during the Soviet times. One of the versions is pre-World War II and the other is after World War II. As with many other Russian songs, these versions differ from the imperial variant by quite a lot, as parts about faith, orthodoxy, and things like that are removed and replaced by words about labor and victory over Germany in the Second World War, as expected with a change of time and place. In the recordings, the Red Army choir singing also varies a lot from the Russian Imperial choirs that sung the pre-revolution version of the march. And besides the pre-World War II and post-World War II versions, there exist a lot of others from the 1960s and onwards, also with varying lyrics. <laughs> Another version of the song was adopted by the Polish underground movement in German-occupied Poland during the Second World War, 
called The Weeping Willows, began to hum, which I unfortunately could not find, and I didn't know that it existed up until recently. But I do remember one in particular, one other version, which was the one by Vladimir Lazarev, which was written in 1984. Now the difference between Lazarev's version is that it's more human nature. It's more human lyrics. As some of the lyrics are, You look into my eyes with anxiety, I catch your dear breath, and a storm is forming far away already. Farewell homeland, remember us. Farewell, familiar faces, etc., etc. Uh, you can see these changes in the clip. Развивается знамя державное, гром над строем гремит полковой, тает в дымке колон колыха. Мать, сестра и жена, и любимая В сердце чуткам тревогу таят Марширует полями родимыми Полк туда, где олеет закат Прощай, сын и брат Отчизны солдат Суров будет бой Пройди его, вернись домой Раскалена броня Вздымается к небу земля Вперед пехота, за рот и рота Судьбу солдатскую кляня Вперед пехота за рот и рота, судьбу солдатскую храня. In between the different versions of this march throughout the years, you can clearly see the differences that rise with the changing times and political structures of the country in which the march was written. But adding on to that version, there are several more. There are mostly quite smaller changes, like maybe one word differences, so I won't bother including them that much. However, you can still check them out for yourself if you're interested. A lot of them are on YouTube, and they all are oftentimes quite different from each other. There's also a much more in-depth video on Proferol Slavyanka, which is, well, talks about all of the little details and the whole story about how the song came to be and how it was played and uh, the composer and how he first played it in 1941 at the Victory Parade. Uh, or the parade, which wasn't victory yet, but at the parade, which uh, took place before the troops, Soviet Union, marched off to fight in the Battle of Moscow. And the video is around 11 years old, but I found it to be most intriguing, and it will, well, I will put a link into the description. Farewell of Slavyanka always shines bright to me in terms of military music, and was played many times, often at Russian victory parades over the years. There are recordings of other countries who played Farewell of Slavyanka, most notably I remember Britain, um, the United States, Hungary, I think also. Overall, it's my favorite military march, but I knew so little about it, and so little about the different versions that I later figured out were actually different versions, the song had changed over the years, that I decided to make this video to learn about it myself, and maybe to give other people, the viewers, some more knowledge about the song in general. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.